One of the reasons I wanted to start Worldwide Cyclery when I was a teenager is because I'm kind of obsessed with building custom mountain bikes to the exact preferences and doing little particular things that I like on my bikes. And I like to build custom bikes every so often. I usually do it about every six months, but it's been a little while thanks to the supply chain issues and all of that. But I've just done a new one and it came out really amazing and I'm excited to show it to you and all the little things I've done to it and tell you why I chose what I chose for my personal trail bike that I ride most often. Let's go. So this is it. I have built actually yet another Revel Ranger. I had one of these for the last almost two years, which is probably the longest I've had any bike. And it's because I just really love this bike. It's perfect for where I ride most often, which is in Southern California, about an hour Northwest of LA in the Santa Monica mountain range. A lot of good sort of, I don't know what you call them, just trail bike trails. They're not smooth, mellow XC stuff. There's plenty of elevation out here, but it's also not super chunky and chundery and it doesn't require too much travel. So this bike, 29 inch wheels, 115 millimeters of travel in the back, 120 in the front is just beautiful for this area. And I love this type of bike and I really I really like to have a bike like this that I build really lightweight, which is what I did with this bike. And then I like to have another bike that is my sort of more enduro-y bike that I ride in various other places that require that. But the bike I ride most often is this guy. This frame is a size large. Uh, I'm five foot eight, not tall by any means, and I just kind of prefer roughly a 470 reach. So I don't really look and care too much about if one brand says small, medium, large, extra large. I'm more just interested in what the reach number is because that's what matters anyway. Uh, 470 reach for me, I really like and prefer when I pair it with a 32 mil length stem. This style bike, which some people call light trail bike, I think the term down country's got tossed around. It really started to shine only a couple years ago when this suspension came out from RockShock and Fox has got great comparable stuff to it now as well. But the Sid Lux Ultimate Rear Shock and the Sid Ultimate Fork, when those things were released, it really made this type of bike work so well because they're just plush, they're supple. <laughs> And it just made a huge difference compared to sort of what this travel range of bike had available to it for a suspension prior to this stuff being released. So I love that about it. It's really made this type of bike amazing and being able to build it just right and make it really light is pretty cool and fun. Some things that I did to this bike that are different than my last Ranger, actually a few things. So for starters, you'll notice the paint job. Wow. Uh, that's a custom paint job by this guy called Technar. You can see his website right here. He does custom mountain bike painting and he's fantastic at it. I love this setup. Uh, actually, Liam, Liam for the most part with a little bit of feedback from me, put together this design of the paint and then we just passed it over to Technar and he made it come to life beautifully. And you can see it's kind of two-faced if you look at the non-drive side of the bike and spin around it like you're looking at right now. I love this thing. I love having a bike that just has a really unique and rare look to it. So to me, it's kind of worth it to do a custom paint when you're able to do it. And I was able to pull it off and I'm glad that we found Technar. He's kind of new to the game, it seems like, at least in the mountain bike industry. And I'm just glad to have a guy like that that's custom painting bikes so well like this. So uh, that's what's going on there with the frame and everything and a suspension. Uh, in terms of cockpit, all Trail 1 stuff, disclaimer, uh, Worldwide Cyclery has an equity stake in Trail 1 and a lot of the crew here is working with Trail 1 and the head engineer over there to really design amazing mountain bike parts that we've always wanted ourselves and also have a really good philanthropic give back element to the trails. Um, so every Trail 1 product that sells a dollar goes to a trail network to help support trail building and trail networks. Um, 
Crockett carbon handlebars, Rockville stem, which is made in California. Uh, I have my bars cut to 760, they're 15 mil rise. That's my preference again for this style of bike. 32 mil length stem, like I mentioned. Uh, Hell's Gate grips, which I love those things. Um, that's a cockpit setup. As far as other contact points, this is the newer version of the WTB Silverado. These Silverados are made out of thunderstorms. Saddle with carbon rails. I think this is the lightest, stealthiest, most amazing looking saddle that is actually still actually pretty comfortable. It doesn't just feel like a piece of wood. And the new material, and I guess you'd call it compound or foam that they have on this newer version actually works quite well and is a good upgrade from the last one. So very impressed with that. I think they did a good job. It's always a risk when you change the actual material of the saddle and WTB nailed it and made it better, which is cool. Um, as far as tires, We've got a million YouTube videos on tires. Uh, this is the, t if you watch our video about tire setup and tire combos specifically, Max's tire combos, this is my preferred setup for this type of bike. Uh, Dissector 2.4, 3C in the front, and then a Recon in the back. Um, just EXO, so not EXO Plus or Double Down or anything like that, I just want EXO. I'm a small guy, 150 pounds, and where I'm riding, I don't think I need EXO Plus. I never really have a problem with tearing sidewalls or dent and rims or anything like that, so that's my preferred tire setup here the wheels i am stoked on these wheels these are different than what i was running on my last ranger so bird kind of came onto the scene i guess it's they've been around for a while now but they came out with their polylite spokes which is this wild look at this word here uhwspe or something uh, we made a whole standalone video on bird spokes in particular they're the world's lightest bicycle spokes but not only that because they're not made out of uh, steel or aluminum they have such a different feel. They're just energetic, they're crazy lightweight, which you really notice when you spin the bike up to speed when you're pedaling. The way they're, they're not flexy, but they're not too rigid. They have this like perfect, it's, it's really hard to describe until you actually ride wheels with these spokes. It just, they work fantastic. And I've recently become totally hooked on them ever since we tested their wheels about a year and a half ago. Um, so I have Industry 9 Hydra Classic Hubs, six bolt. Uh, in chrome laced to the bird spokes, which is then laced to the bird Hawk 27 carbon rims. I used to never run carbon rims, but in the last couple years, they have gotten so strong and so reliable that I don't think I can really break a carbon rim at this point, and I haven't in ages, so I'm sticking with carbon rims until further notice, at least for now. Uh, as far as brakes, SRAM G2 Ultimate with carbon levers and chrome. I really like SRAM brakes. Um, I think that they have that perfect balance of sort of modulation and power. I do really like the code brakes from SRAM, which I have on my enduro bike, whatever that is. But on this bike, because I'm more concerned about weight, I just want the G2s and ultimates at that. As far as rotors, most people don't do this. This is a two-piece rotor. It's this HSX rotor from SRAM. It's got an aluminum carrier in the middle, 180 in the front, 160 in the back, six bolt. They're kind of pricey. There you go. Thank you, sir. There you go. Thank you, sir. There you go. But in my opinion, they're lighter. They have better sort of heat dispersion because of that aluminum carrier. But most importantly is they're just more rigid and they never, they, I shouldn't say never, but almost never bend, which means my brakes don't ever rub, which really bothers me. I really care about getting the bleed perfect and then not having the brakes rub. And those particular rotors, because of the aluminum carrier, seem to just not bend and therefore never have brake rub as long as the brakes are bled well. So I really like those rotors and that's why I constantly prefer them um, on this bike. Uh, let's see, what's next? E13 XCX race crank set in 170 mil carbon cranks. I believe these are the lightest mountain bike production cranks on the planet at the moment. And uh, they come in 170 and I love them. I think they're stiff, they're super lightweight. They did not come with crank boots in the box. What are you doing, E13? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> please give me some crank boots. It's hard to find them. Maybe they're out of stock. Uh, those are linked up to some Crank Brothers Mallet E pedals with a titanium spindle. Crank Brothers makes two different spindles, a sort of, I don't know if they call it a long and a short or just a short and a normal, but I like the short one. I feel like my foot has better clearance that way from hitting things. And I also don't think it's necessary to 
widen the Q factor on my cranks when you have more power with them tighter in. Yes, you get more stability, but you lose some pedaling efficiency. Q factor is a complicated thing, but on this particular bike, I want the short spindle and I got the titanium one because I wanted this thing to be as light as possible. Uh, E13 chainring, it's a 34 tooth on there now. I think that was a little aggressive. I'm gonna switch it to a 32 tooth because I am running an 11 speed drivetrain with a 10 to 42 X01 cassette on here. Uh, it's an XX111 speed rear derailleur and shifter. You might be wondering, what on earth are you doing with an 11 speed drivetrain? Those things are old. Yes, they're old. However, they are, this whole setup is much lighter weight than an Eagle drivetrain, also including an Eagle access drivetrain. And I cared about weight a lot on this bike. And I also cared a little bit about the clearance of the derailleur cage and the 11 speed rear derailleur has got a shorter cage and the whole setup is uh, considerably lighter than the 12 speed Eagle stuff. And for this bike and my fitness level, I don't really feel like I need Eagle on this bike. And I think it totally works fine on this particular bike for where I'm riding it and my fitness level at the moment. So that's why I'm running an 11 speed drivetrain. If you remember the last Ranger I built, I took a 12 speed Eagle cassette and we cut off the large cog. A lot of people had a panic attack about that. I did that because I wanted a gold cassette, but the same reason I wanted it to all be 11 speed and yada yada. Anyways, uh, I decided not to do that this time around because I didn't care for gold or a color I wanted black and they make black at 11 speed. So I didn't have to go through that mess again, which was a huge challenge. Luckily we have a fantastic mechanic here being Liam who cut that cog off and then also changed the cage on the rear derailleur to be the 11 speed cage on a 12 speed Eagle derailleur. That whole process was a lot of work for essentially not really any reason other than looks. Um, so this made a lot more sense on this bike given that I wanted that color. Uh, let's see, what else is on here that I didn't mention? Um, I have a water bottle cage from Supercaz, which is kind of a roadie brand. I was just looking for a light cage that was in stock and looked cool. Don't really recommend it, super wobbly. Probably gonna change that out. Also like a side load cage, and this is a top load cage. Uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned the dropper, but it's a KS dropper. KS is kind of a weird company. It's not really that popular for dropper posts anymore. They really were some years ago, and then a lot of other people made reliable, good dropper posts as well, and KS didn't really have anything too unique. However, they do have the current absolute lightest dropper post. That's 150 mil in travel, and I think it's called the C12. It's not even on KS's website at the moment. They don't even update their website. Uh, the dropper lever is the Wolf Tooth Remote. That is my favorite dropper lever. I think it just looks really good. It pairs perfectly with the matchmaker to the SRAM brakes. It works great. It has a nice grippy sort of traction pad on it, the sealed bearing. It's just so tight and sturdy and well-made, manufactured in Minnesota. Uh, I really enjoy that dropper lever. It's just fantastic. Um, let's see, least but not last, as Jared would say, I forgot to tell you that I have the new Trail One tubeless valve stems, the version two, which have a valve core remover built into the cap, which looks rad, and aluminum caps. Um, they're light, these ones are oil slick. Um, I think that was just a nice little icing on the cake for this whole bike, and it came out really good. Um, stoked on this bike. If you've watched this far, thank you, I appreciate it. If you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to drop them in the comments below. We'll try to get to all of them. Um, if we don't get to them, you can also find me on Instagram, at Jeff Cayley. Just slide into my DMs, ask me bike questions if you like, and I'm more than happy to answer questions there. About bikes, a lot of people ask me random bike questions in there, and I have no problem with it, it's totally fine. I actually just like to sit down on the toilet and answer Instagram DMs is kind of a habit of mine, so feel free to slide in there. And if you like this video, please share it with your mountain bike friends, hit that subscribe button and the thumbs up button. See you next time.